Do you remember when the WWE draft used to actually have some sort, some type of drama? You remember when it used to have big time, massive changes, surprises? Remember when you used to get like the backstage reactions like you were showing the Raw and SmackDown rosters like they were a green room? Like you would see every year for the NFL draft, the NBA draft, like you remember this stuff? Remember when you used to get excited for it? Now it's like it's this yearly thing where we just do it to do it, pretend like you're dramatically shaking shit up, and all the while you're really not. Half the picks are for people that are staying on the same brand any damn ways, which kind of seems to defeat the whole damn purpose of the draft, doesn't it? Like, it's weird. Like you're burning half of your picks to people to stay in the same damn place. Like, if anything, couldn't you do something if you were actually doing television with forethought to where you could have weeks of matches that tied into different stipulations? Like, if you win, you stay on SmackDown, or if you win, you stay on Raw. Loser is a free agent. Loser goes into the draft pool. Winner of a big tag match or a big title match of some kind gets a top pick for their brand. Like, can we have trades? Like, there are all of these things. So you can clearly see where this is done by Vince. There is no planning. There is no forethought. It's just ah, another cheap ass gimmick that we could throw out there. All the while being done by somebody that clearly has never watched a draft for a sports league and therefore has no clue or understanding of how the hell this is supposed to work. Now, instead of getting the, the big surprises and the reactions and everything else, now you just get a lazy video package. When you have Adam Pierce or Sonya Deville announcing the pick, it's a lazy video package and a quick kind of half-ass commentary from the commentator. Like, oh man, it sucks to lose them, but Raw got a great one. Like, that sounds stupid. Oh boy, SmackDown, yeah, we got Drew. Like, come on, man. Have some stakes here. Yeah. Like some will point to this as a reason to end the brand split. And the only thing I hate more than the brand split is if you did away with the brand split at this point. And you might say, why? Why is because the few interesting characters, the few interesting stories that you have, you would just further dilute them by having them have to appear on both shows each week. That's the primary reason why. Other than that, I totally understand. They don't have the talent to support both shows. And you can clearly see that in this draft. Uh, you had some notable changes, certainly. Raw gets Big E, but he was already there because he's the WWE champion. They get Bianca Belair, Edge, The Mysterios, Austin Theory. Um, SmackDown gets the bocce bitch. Queen Plastic Surgery yourself, Drew McIntyre, The New Day, Hit Row, Jeff Hardy. So there's a little bit of NXT flavor in there. You know, some notable names switching, but not a ton. A lot of them were just picks. We're going to keep you here. Now, of course, the number one pick was who the number one pick should have held the then. He naturally starts the show, stays with the show that he has made his own. Our tribal chief, you must acknowledge him, Roman Reigns. I really wish this story between him and Brock Lesnar wasn't building towards a crown jewel match. I really, really, really wish that it wasn't going there. Because I would be a lot more excited about it. Because I would actually be watching potentially the payoff to it. But I'm not likely going to watch the crown jewel show again. Just like I've never watched any of the crown jewel shows. So I don't see why I would start now. Tribal Chief versus Brock or not. That said, the dynamics of Brock and Roman in these kind of new redefined roles really works. It's quite awesome. You've got a true big fight feel here. And most importantly of all, I love how Roman went with the mindset of, you know, let me get out there in the first segment. It's the most watched segment and let me get the hell out of Dodge. Salute to you for that. And I'm also proud of Roman for making sure when Brock Lesnar came and stuck his nose in business where it didn't belong, he made sure he got in some good clean shots and then he left before anything happened. There were no trips to Suplex City. Believe me, 
Do not fall for the lies and the vicious slanders of the interwebs. There was also some power too, like later on in the night when he had the little interaction between Jeff Hardy and Brock Lesnar. You're like, oh, this Brock's going to speak more now here in 30 seconds than he has in five years. Cool. And, you know, planting the seed about how Brock or Paul Heyman might be some type of sleeper agent and, you know, the backstage back and forth between Roman and Paul Lee. And I mean, Paul Lee sold this shit so well, he was moved to tears. Like, yeah, this story really fucking works. And the Usos better get drafted, I guess, to SmackDown, huh? Because if not, Paul Lee is going to be left for dead on Raw. <laughs> and we're actually saying dead now and kill and murder and stuff. Hey, I guess desperation allows you to say some other words. But yeah, like that was the most interesting thing about this show because otherwise it was a lot of stupidity. The draft segments were lame, like Kevin Owens versus Happy Baron Corbin. Remember when the Baron Corbin character was actually starting to be interesting? They were starting to do something unique with him. Remember when you were getting emotionally invested in bum-ass broke Baron Corbin? And then they just undercut that because they're dumb dicks just to go right back to making him boring as fuck again. Well, that's what they did. And Madcap Moss, not Cat, C-A-T, Madcap, as in Mad Lie Moss. Who the fuck thinks this shit up? I and then Baron Corbin beats Kevin Owens. I guess Kevin Owens is going to be sending a message all the way until his contract expires before he goes to AEW, huh? Yeah, whatever. Uh, probably the other one kind of good segment on this show, honestly, was Edge calling out Seth Rollins to respond to what had happened before. And we got the old, yes, indeed, the old wrestling breaking and entering. And there, there's Seth Rollins in Edge and Beth Phoenix's house. You see the imagery of the backpacks. Like, you know, it's amazing how in wrestling you could just be casually strolling around and you go somewhere and you're able to break into somebody's house and have a camera crew with you. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating. And, you know, as Seth Rollins is going around the house in different rooms and obviously playing mind games, Edge picks up the call phone, he calls Beth, tells her, don't go back home, don't take the kids, go to your brothers. What do you say, Daniel and David? Aren't those the names of the FTR guys? Nice little touch there. That segment worked pretty well. I think that was good. But, uh, yeah, after that, it was pretty much all downhill. Uh... Carmelo and Liv Morgan, Carmella going the mask route, and I don't mean like mask, like, somebody stop me! I mean like the mask 1980s movie with, wasn't it Cher, the mask? Ooh, <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Eight man ten! <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler! The New Day are on SmackDown, hooray, whatever. Your main event of SmackDown, though, was notable. And that it was Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. Oh, look, it's the SummerSlam title match that we didn't get. And now both of them are wrestling on a fuck-off SmackDown buried as part of the WWE draft. Which, by the way, the picks aren't taking effect for several weeks. Like, this is just stupid. But here's their match. And, of course, it's buried in a WWE draft episode. And Becky cringe on commentary. Can, can you please, for the love of God... Tell me how anybody looks at the cringe god here and says that this is your greatest female superstar of all time. She's trying too hard. It doesn't work. She's having trouble saying certain words like it was a fucking train wreck. And the whole, well, she main evented a WrestleMania because of Ronda Rousey, you dumb motherfuckers. This is your lady goat. Holy shit. That's how low the bar is? That's how low the standards are? Is this Conor McGregor wannabe rip-off gimmick and shtick, which doesn't work in any fucking way, Becky Cringe, this is who you fucking stand for? Unbelievable. Of course, Becky eventually gets involved, which leads to Sasha being able to win. Which, you know, in and of itself, when it seems like you're going down the path of trying to do some type of triple threat dynamic here, interesting. But of course, since the bocce bitch herself, Madam Plastic Surgery is there, and she's bringing her Raw Women's Title to SmackDown. How the fuck that fucking works out? Of course, here comes Charlotte to help Becky steal the damn shine. So whereas Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks have had this match that is supposed to main event the show... You end the show with Charlotte Flair and Becky Cringe holding up their fucking titles. Somebody shoot me now. 
That just screams Vince. Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the two black women wrestle, and then and then when their match is done, we're gonna get them out of the way because we've got mayonnaise business to conduct here. Oh God, I don't know which one is worse. Uh, no, Charlotte is worse. But Becky cringe is Becky cringe for a reason. She is a cringe god for a reason. She fucking sucks. And you mentally unbalanced, unhealthy Becky Lynch fans should get that through your heads. Like, this is not a great or an all-time great performer. She is a product of her time and a prop that is pushed and forced, just like the botchy bitch that is now, unfortunately, going to be on SmackDown every week in Charlotte Flair. Imagine looking at Charlotte's over-pushed, over-forced, over-botchy, over-plastic ass and saying this is the type of talent that you want to root for. <sighs> Crappy SmackDown this week. Couple of good things in it, but whoopee. Now I got to sit there and watch Charlotte every fucking week. The Lord giveth, ugh, and he taketh away, ugh.